Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my director's spotlight on Hideo Gosha, who began his directing career in the mid-1960s and continued through to the early 1990s. Now, Gosha is a director who is extremely reliable for me. You know, there are only a few films in his entire filmography that I dislike, so watching a Gosha flick practically guarantees that I'm spending my time wisely. Most of my personal favorites from him are in the drama and action genres, many of which are hybrids between the two and are set in the samurai era. These are the films that this director is primarily known for, at least by his fans. So if you're interested in those kinds of films, you should check this guy out. And I do think that he's one of the more underappreciated Japanese directors out there. So let's get to the list here. Now my thoughts on each film would be very brief, primarily because this is a list video, not a review. And remember, titles for all the movies I discuss will be listed in the description box below. I am not providing availability information in this playlist because most of these films I saw years ago and availability has changed over time. My usual method for checking availability is Google, so be sure to seek out any films that seem interesting to you. <clears throat> so let's do this. Number 10, Bandits vs. Samurai Squadron, 1978. This is a drama action flick. A former samurai warrior has abandoned his class to become the leader of a gang of thieves. Now he leads his outlaws in an attempt to rob the castle of his former clan. Now, this starts off with a fairly long nighttime raid, but settles in as mostly a drama, with some additional fights peppered in here and there for much of its 160 minute runtime. Uh, the sound effects may be a, a bit goofy at times, and there are quite a few characters to keep track of, which can get a little bit confusing for the viewer, but this is a good flick. Number 9, Sword of the Beast, 1965. This is a drama action flick. Now, this film is about a dishonored samurai. You know, he meets a squire who is illegally stealing the Shogun's gold and clashes with money-grubbing thugs. So this is a quality flick with some solid direction and characters. The theme of samurai ethics, or lack thereof, is also explored. I like the idea of juxtaposing the morality of characters and showing how some of them are willing to retain their humanity, while others have succumbed to being mere violent beasts. And like many Japanese films set in the samurai era, this avoids an overly romanticized tone of that time period. Number 8. Fireflies of the North, 1984. This is a drama. Set in the frigid, snowy wilderness of Hokkaido during the late 1800s, a corrupt prison warden makes a profit from local brothels in dealings with other businessmen, you know, using inmates as cheap labor to build the roads needed to open up the territory. Now, this film includes quite a bit of sex, because much of the focus is on the prostitutes, many of which seem to be working to earn reduced sentences for their husbands. Now, this is a good flick. But look out for that bear that shows up, because uh, he could cause some problems. Number 7, Death Shadows from 1986. This is an action drama. Like her father before her, a young woman becomes a member of a secret group within the Shogunate Police. She attempts to obtain evidence against a nobleman suspected of smuggling. Now, some fans of this director dislike this film, but I actually really enjoy it because it has a quirky, campy tone that creates a fun viewing experience. You know, the sets are colorful uh, and nice to look at. Naoto Takanaka, of all people, shows up here and plays a nutcase, a delightful nutcase, which is always welcome in my eyes. This is quite a bizarre but amusing little film that I think is underappreciated, even from this director's fans. Number six, The Wolves, 1971. This is a crime drama. Now, after going to prison for killing the boss of the rival Kano clan, a man gets released later on, only to find out that his gang is merged with the Kanos. So Gosha directs this rather slow-going film, but develops his characters and conflicts very nicely. The plot is complex, and the bad blood between these gangs boils throughout. There are a handful of violent, lengthy stabbings that are very well staged. And if you're a fan of Tatsuya Nakadai, that's another reason to check this one out. Number 5, The Geisha, 1983. This is a drama. This is about a young woman who slowly becomes a very successful geisha in Yokira, the most famous geisha house of the first half of the 20th century. 
Performances are very good here, and the geisha infighting is quite entertaining, even a bit scrappy and physical at times, especially the bathroom and hot spring cat fights, which are actually delightfully entertaining. Ken Ogata and Kimiko Ikigami star in this, and you'll recognize the actress from the crazy horror film House from 1977, as well as the fantastic film The Man Who Stole the Sun from 1979, and she's also good in this one. The Geisha may be a bit long at 144 minutes, but this is totally worth watching if you want a Japanese film that concerns one of the most culturally significant industries within that country. Number 4, Three Outlaw Samurai, 1964. This is an action drama. This is a surprisingly good film considering that it was Gosha's debut entry. I mean, this is this guy's first film, and this is really good stuff. It's about a ronin who encounters a band of peasants who have been kidnapped, and uh, uh, the daughter of their magistrate, they actually kidnap the daughter of the magistrate in the hopes of coercing a reduction in taxes. Now, two other outlaw samurai join our protagonist to help in the fight. This is a common premise that is very entertaining due to its sheer execution. It has a great blend of acting, conflicts, suspense, and sword fights. Undeniably fun, crowd-pleasing stuff here. And now we have reached my top three Hideo Gosha films, which are practically interchangeable in terms of position. It is quite difficult to choose between these, but I have attempted to do so. Number three, Tenchu, also known as Hitokiri, 1969. This is a drama-action hybrid. A destitute ronin, played by Shintaro Katsu, allies himself with an established clan that is headed by a ruthless leader played by Tatsuya Nakadai, but his ambitions may turn him into a mindless killer. Now, the lead character is flawed, ambitious, and simple-minded. I mean, Katsu is most well-known for his Zatoichi films, but he did a fantastic job of portraying the character in this one as well, and the sword fighting in Tenshu is fast and intense, with some fantastic camera work. I mean, there are some sufficiently bloody deaths to enjoy here as well. Like some of Geisha's, or Gosha's other films, the plot synopsis sounds generic, but its direction and the performances really elevate the viewing experience. The ending of this is also quite different from what you might expect. Number 2. Violent Streets, 1974. This is an action drama. Now this one feels a bit different from some of Gosha's previous films because it's primarily a Yakuza tale set in a city involving kidnapping and murder. You know, it begins with a simple criminal scheme, but conflicts quickly spiral out of control. What is familiar are the solid performances and assured direction that one expects from Gosha. As an added bonus, this is probably the most violent and bloody film in this director's entire filmography. The entire second half is basically non-stop assassination attempts, which provide plenty of entertaining moments. Violent Streets is a hidden gem that flies under the radar of virtually everyone, even fans of this director. And my number one favorite Hideo Gosha film? I might have to give it to Goyokin, 1969 drama action flick. A guilt-haunted samurai attempts to stop a massacre from taking place. Now, this can be easily described as a very high-quality film because it actually focuses a lot on character development, especially the guilt of the protagonist and how he tries to redeem himself. But there are some sword fights peppered in as well, Acting is commendable from some well-known actors like Tatsuya Nakadai, but the supporting actress, Uriko Asoaka, uh, made one of the most lasting impressions on me as well. Now, this is set in the snowy winter environments, which are captured very nicely and add a lot of atmosphere. The finale takes place on a seaside with tons of huge tree logs and fires blazing. It's very cool and intense stuff. This is a fantastic film. So those are my personal favorite Hideo Gosha films. I hope this list can provide some recommendations for those of you who are unfamiliar with this director. And if you've seen some of his films already, you know, tell me your favorites in the comments section below. And while you're here, you know, check out my other top 10 lists on this channel. I have videos up for Yasujiro Ozu, uh, Hiroshi Tashigahara, Kenji Fukuzaku, Takeshi Kitano, Zhang Yimo, Yasuzo Masumura, Kihachi Okamoto, and Masahiro Shinoda. So if you're interested in those directors or simply want some recommendations uh, for their best stuff or some really good older Japanese films, check out those lists. I'll paste a link in that playlist in the description box below. 
And as always, I'll see you next time.